Hello, this is Jason Clement, Technical Sales Manager at Isonus, and welcome to this Peer Access Advanced Training Module. This Peer Access module is on Active Directory integration. Our prerequisites are a basic understanding of Peer Access. You'll need to know how to create rules and add users and other simple tasks. A basic understanding of Active Directory and Windows domains. You don't need an advanced Microsoft certification, but you do need to know how Active Directory is structured and a little bit about domains. Our course objectives are understand what the Peer Access Active Directory integration is, understand how the Active Directory integration works, and configure the Active Directory integration. So first off, what is the Peer Access Active Directory integration? It automates a portion of the Peer Access administration for us. It links groups in Active Directory to user groups in Peer Access. Since Peer Access uses groups for rules and so does Active Directory, it makes it very easy to set this up and automate the enrollment of users in the system. It synchronizes the Active Directory users to Peer Access. It also pulls changes in Active Directory and updates the Peer Access system. This integration pulls Active Directory by default every 10 minutes for any changes, user adds, users disabled, users deleted, etc. It then runs an update in Peer Access and pushes out all the new rule changes. When changes are found in Active Directory, it automatically runs this update without any intervention from the end user. So how does this actually work? We have our Active Directory server in our private network, and we have our Peer Access Cloud server out on the internet. In order for this to work, the Active Directory server has to talk to Peer Access Cloud. However, we just don't want to have our Active Directory server connected externally out to the internet. That's a big security risk. So we use a service in the middle called AD Connect that talks to Active Directory, and then it talks out to Peer Access Cloud. This ensures your data is secure and there are no external connections directly to your Active Directory server. This integration only pulls data from the Active Directory server. It does not ever send data to the Active Directory server. So any changes made in Peer Access are not pushed down and changing things in your domain. So a little more information on how this works. We have groups in Active Directory. We have users inside those groups. We create user groups in Peer Access. During the synchronization, those users transfer from Active Directory and are pulled into Peer Access. Those groups are linked to existing rules in Peer Access, and an update is run to push out new rules and add new users into the system. So there's a few rules that we're going to need to follow when we're working with this Active Directory integration. This integration is available with Peer Access Cloud 51 to 100 access point licenses and above, plus Peer Access Manager. Active Directory trumps any changes made in Peer Access. If a user is disabled in Peer Access, but not in Active Directory, the next partial sync will enable that user again. If a user is deleted from Active Directory, it will disable the user in Peer Access during the next full synchronization. Partial syncs that look at changes happen every 10 minutes by default. Full synchronizations happen every 24 hours by default. This syncs users by their last name and first name. If a user is already in Peer Access but the name is spelled differently than an Active Directory, a second person will be added with the alternate spelling of that name. Users not in Active Directory can be added into Peer Access with no issues. For example, contractor badges, etc., that probably will not have an Active Directory entry. As long as the last name and first name does not match anyone in the system, there will be no issues in Peer Access. We always want to be prepared when we're configuring this new system. We're going to need to make sure that Active Directory is running on a Windows Server 2008 R2 or later. New Active Directory groups may need to be created. Logical access on the network may not directly translate to physical access into the location. A server to load the Active Directory Connect program on. It doesn't necessarily need to be the Active Directory server, but it does need access to both the Active Directory server and to peer access, either the cloud or the manager version. Domain credentials with admin level privileges to be able to talk to the domain server. 
Now these credentials just need to be set in the AD Connect program. They don't flow to Peer Access and are not saved anywhere else. And a Peer Access user with the administrator role. We're going to walk through a demonstration of configuring the Active Directory bridge. We'll have a new Peer Access tenant on Peer Access Cloud. We'll have a Windows Domain Controller with Active Directory already configured. I have Active Directory groups and users configured already. And I already have Peer Access groups and rules already configured. Finally, I already have Active Directory Connect installed, and we'll review the configuration of that. Now let's jump in and take a look at the software. Here I am logged into my Peer Access Cloud instance. The first thing we'll need to do is create a user in Peer Access with the administrator role. So we'll go to Users, and I'll create a new user for this. I'm going to call it AD, last name login. We'll give it web access here. AD login at isonusdemo.local, which is my domain name. Edit the user role, give it the administrator level of access it needs. Click Save. Create a password. Save that. I don't want to update that password. I don't want it saved in Chrome. We'll go ahead and click Save. And we're all set. We don't need to give this person permissions or anything or anything like that. We just need a user that can authenticate into the AD Connect program. That's all we need to do in Peer Access right now. So let's go ahead and move over to our server. I have an RDP session into my domain controller. On a new install, the first thing you'd want to do is download the AD Connect program. If you go to Support, go to Peer Access Software, you'll see we have Peer Access Active Directory Installation Guide and Peer Access Active Directory Connect Download. You'll probably want to download both, especially the first time. You'll want to take a look at the installation guide here, and you'll also want to download the Active Directory Connect Download. It's a very small download with an executable that you'll run, which will install a couple pieces of software on the server. Following the instructions, let's go to the install directory and open up the configuration program. By default, it's installed under C drive, program files x86, isonus, and active directory connect. So we're going to run the AD connect configuration program. Yes, we want to allow it. And it's going to pop up with this screen here. Basically, we have our peer access login and our Active Directory login to be able to pull the Active Directory server. So here I've got peeraccessdemo.com, which is the cloud site that I'm using. And here's my username, adlogin at isonusdemo.local, and the password I put in. We'll go ahead and test this just to make sure we're getting a connection. So we can see that was successful. And then my domain, which is isonusdemo.local, and my username and password for a domain admin user. We'll go ahead and test the Active Directory here to make sure it's connected, and we get a success there as well. We can also run some tests from here. We can get the configuration and get some tenant info and other such things. But the main thing that you want to do when you first set this up is go to Test Active Directory and click Get Groups. You want to make sure that you get an output, something similar to this, that pulls in all the groups that are in the domain. Once you have your configuration set, go ahead and click Save. I'm just going to close out because it's already saved and we're all set up. Now let's take a look at our Active Directory structure. We see all of our default groups that are already populated when we made this a domain controller. I've created some physical access control security groups. I prefix them with PACS just to differentiate them from everything else in the system. Down here, we can see that I've added some users in already. We'll go ahead and double click on Anders. We can see that he has first and last name. I'll skip over to telephone. I've used the pager field as the card number because really who has a pager anymore these days. Finally, we'll click member of and we can see that he's a member of the PAX General Employees Group. Perfect. This is an extremely simple AD setup, but the concept stays the same the larger you grow. Groups equals permissions. Finally, let's take a look at the local services. We'll scroll down here to Isonus, and here's our Isonus AD Connect. 
by default it's set to manual. So let's double click on that. We'll set it to automatic delayed start. Click apply, click OK. And then we'll go ahead and start the service. It does not start by default. You have to go in and set it and start it to begin the process. Now that that's set up, we can go ahead and close our remote session to the server. And we'll go to our settings and our Active Directory tab. The first thing we want to do is set up our user field mapping. So we'll go ahead and click Refresh Active Directory User Fields. Now that it's completed, we can go ahead and map these fields in. So we'll start with first name. The AD field for first name is given name. So we'll just go ahead and search for that and choose that. We'll go ahead and add another mapping. This will be last name. And last name in Active Directory is SN. So we'll go ahead and map that over. At a minimum, we must have first name and last name mapped. We'll go ahead and add our last one here. And you can go ahead and map more fields than this if you need to. I'm just going to map first name, last name, and badge credential. But you can also map a keypad credential, alert notification emails, etc. So we'll go ahead and choose badge credential. And this was actually the pager field we were using. And it's actually just called pager. Now we're going to want to save this before we map our groups. Here we'll click Refresh Active Directory Groups. Now we'll go ahead and map our groups. One of the reasons I put the prefix of PAX in front of my Active Directory groups is it makes it a lot easier to search now. So we'll take our PAX All Access to our All Access User Group. our PAX IT group to our IT employee user group, and finally, our PAX general employees to our general employees user group. We'll go ahead and save this. Now these user groups in Peer Access have already been mapped out to rules, so once the users transfer over from Active Directory to Peer Access, they'll go ahead and inherit those rules. The last thing we have to do here is sync our Active Directory. This could take a few minutes or probably longer if you have hundreds or thousands of users in your Active Directory. Okay, our synchronization is complete, so let's go ahead and take a look at the users. We can see that all of our users have been populated from Active Directory. We can see that they've all been populated into appropriate groups. If we go ahead and click on one of these users, we can see that the credential has been populated from that pager field dropped into our all access group and populated with the business rules. So in this scenario, you could literally enroll somebody in Active Directory. It will push out their credential and everything, update the rules, send out all the updates to the reader controllers in the field. And within 10 minutes, which is the default partial sync time, they'll have access into the facility. Now you could use as little or more of this if you want. You can just use first and last name and then have them go to a security department or HR department to pick up their credential. Somebody would log into Peer Access and add their credential. You could add pins and some other information in the Active Directory fields to synchronize over as well. So that's it. Any changes you make in Active Directory will now synchronize over into Peer Access. Just remember, Active Directory trumps Peer Access. If I deactivate Randall Thor here, the next partial sync or full sync will re-enable his account if it is not deactivated in Active Directory as well. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and learn about our Active Directory integration. We hope it was beneficial and have a fantastic day.